the recording. Hey, everyone, this is episode 467, 467, 400 <laughs> of the Houtini cast. I love how the volume comes back on that. And this is the uh, 14th of June of 2023, and this is the live version of the show that goes out uh, every other Wednesday. Well usually and is the raw version of the show which we yeah which goes out with any flubs and flaws intact uh we will also turn this into a a youtube video afterwards and but uh, we will also clean up the audio a bit and we'll put it out as a podcast so this is how we do the dids it and let's go to let's go ahead and let everyone know that we're live Four hundred sixty-seven. So halfway, or two thirds of the way to five hundred from four hundred. All right. Hello, hello. And we are um, going to be giving out some of the jetpack codes. Probably at least, I would say two of them at least, maybe more. Sounds but good. Two, probably two um, is better because there are sort of a limited amount that we have. I can be the randomizer. Like we've that would be before. good. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I have it um, coded, you know, I have it written down in the in the, the show note or the show notes when we'll do that. So okay. that sounds good. I am ready. So I'm going to have some water and let's, let's hit this puppy. Welcome. I'm always <sighs> quiet when you drink now. Feels good. Yeah. Just in case. <laughs> I don't wanna, Just in case. Wow. <laughs> Watch right. me, watch that thing with the tongue out become like the the uh, YouTube splash. Right. I always have to because I always look at all three of them to see what one either was the best or if failing a really good one, it, which one's the funniest. And I do just do that one. Sometimes we're like, you know, <laughs> our our heads are all askew or whatever. It's all right. good though. All right, got my Star Wars T-shirt on. I'm all good to go. Okay. All you. right. Yeah. All right. I'm ready to go. Going in five. Okay. Up. Hi, and welcome to the Utini Cast, the best bush pilot in the Outer Rim territories. This is episode 467, being recorded on Wednesday, June 14th, 2023. I'm your host, Jill, and with me is my co-host, Kitty Kisses. Hey, Kitty. Hello, Chill. Hello, chat. <laughs> All right, and uh, what you been up to since the last show, which was three weeks ago, and that was uh, due to my schedule. Yeah, I just, it, first of all, that went quick. Yeah. Holy crap. I've been really, <laughs> really, really busy. Like, time is, is really flying. Um, I played my, I've been playing my ghost dog cosplay character. Nice. And that she, he's a sentinel slash shadow when needed. I just started the chapters and it's, it's weird. Like, you know, sometimes you make a character mm-hmm. and you go, oh, you know, this character looks pretty cool. I kind of like it. And then as you play it, you're going, I, I, I really like this character. Mm-hmm. I, I, and now I'm at the point where I love this character. Nice. And I, I'm like, <laughs> maybe I need a new main, but uh, yeah, he's, he's awesome. He's super fun. And I'm playing him light side, but, you know, because I like to give my characters a little arc. Mm -hmm. in their story through the choices um he's gonna he's gonna go a little mace windu and kill some people that he thinks is necessary Mm -hmm. and then maybe get that art going or i don't know yet maybe go full on dark so he's gonna ride the line for a while and then spin off one way or the other like a like a like a like an asteroid hitting an orbit yeah like maybe be a saboteur even i haven't mm. done that in a while mm-hmm. but uh yeah we're gonna have to wait and see but he he's super 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 fun nice um let's see secondly congratulations to working class nerds they had their 200th episode nice congratulations Woo-hoo. you guys great work those are wonderful guys yeah mm-hmm. uh next I, i'm getting close to having the basement done closer Mm-hmm. Seems like every time I get close, there's like one other thing. <laughs> one other thing. One other well, thing. this time there's two other things, and I'm good to go. Oh, I've got to put a top on this wood piece, and I'm like, kiss my ass, basement. I'm out. 
<laughs> I'm going to be very happy when it's done. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm very, very, very excited about that. And um, Kitty and I, when this is all done, we'll have the entire upstairs to ourselves. So that's going to be a lot nicer because, you know, her kitty cat right now, because Princess Moo Mau is a very, very, uh, you know, she's kind of a scary cat. So oh. she kind of stays down there. And and Nexu is just a palooka. <laughs> he won't leave her alone. He's obsessed with her. He's just like, uh, I like you so much. We joke around that he's like, what is that on her butt? Like, is, <laughs> what is, you know, because she has that a tail growth, and Nixu right. doesn't. Like, what is that? <laughs> so that would be nice having, you know, having her up here, which will be really cool. And lastly, I hit level 52 in real life. Whoop, whoop. Congratulations. And it's really weird. And it's uh, 52. So I am You're a whole now deck older. old. Yeah, I'm older than both of my parents ever got. Oh. I'm higher level than both my parents. Wow. Which is weird. I'm like, so I don't know. But uh, I'm I'm happy to be here, and I'm still trucking. Nice. And yeah. I'm happy to be part of the Utini cast, chill. Aww, and I'm so sweet that you and I have become friends. Yeah, like exactly. Like real life friends. Yeah, exactly. It's a so great thing. That is way cool. Yeah. Yeah. So Gosh, that's about thanks. it for me, bud. All right. Congratulations again. <laughs> that is really exciting. Well, I you kept... You kept I 52 think, warm for me, and you're going to keep yeah, 53 right. warm. For I'm coming. It's coming up. You. I'm coming up hot on 53 here in just Woo! a couple of months. So, Get it. <laughs> 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 all right. Let's see. We've got. Uh, let's see. Who we've got in the in the chat room? Who does Who does Twitch think we have in the chat room? Is how I usually phrase it nowadays because I don't understand their list thing thing anymore. Zero one L is here. One fifty two Domino. Twenty four is here. Alice Dre. Uh, Drap Snat. Exus. Evans of zero four one one one. Lakai five hundred. Kata. Kitty Treats is here. Squishy Twitchy and Starry Saber all here. Hey everyone. Thank you for coming along, and I'm sure there's some more folks will be coming in in a little bit too. Um, and let's see. So I did take about almost a week off, and I traveled to my up to my wife's family, her mom and her stepdad, um, way in the middle of uh, BC, Canada, like mm. pretty far in. Like they have a little place in Vancouver, but they have this other house that's like. I, I, rather than, I mean, it's personal, so I won't say where they are exactly, but you know, a little, <laughs> little town that's like a hundred thousand people or less. Um, and, and they overlook this rather lovely lake and it's, it's all very lovely. Uh, it was really fun actually. And then we actually took like the sort of the, lo the long way back and saw some of the really lovely valleys and, uh, oh, cool. you know, um, some of the national parks that they have up there and stuff like that. It was really great. So Oh, that's really um, cool. Yeah, I really enjoyed it actually. Uh, let's see, and then uh, came back and killed off Jade almost immediately. <laughs> Way to go, <laughs> so, chill. <laughs> so yeah, so Jade, my Mortal Kombat uh, cosplay character, she's she was like a you know a hardcore character. So if she died, she was dead. And I came back and like within two sessions, she had died. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what she, got her? She died at the end of the class story for the night because oh. there's an instagib mechanic in the emperor fight that I got distracted and forgot about. So what happens is the emperor attacks you and blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. A couple things happen, not or a couple you know globals go by or whatever. Then all these ads come in and it's very distracting. Mm -hmm. They don't really do all that much, but I was like. I was trying to pay attention to like whether they were hurt, really hurting me or not. And I was also trying to do damage to the actual emperor because if you do that damage to the other ones, it doesn't help at all. Right. And I didn't want to accidentally like change target. Plus I was like chatting, like, <laughs> I was, like blah, blah, blah mm -hmm. on the stream. So I distracted myself too. I forget, I forgot like there's this one thing you have to interrupt and I didn't interrupt it and she got knocked back and, and killed. So that was oh. it. She was dead. So no companion. And I deleted right? her. Yeah, no companion too. Yeah, right. okay. Uh, but it would have. I think it kills you anyway. Like if you don't do it right. Wow. So yeah, definitely interrupt that if uh, if you're. What if does you're that doing feel that. like? It was spending a lot of time. I was actually kind of disappointed character. because I actually I really liked her character and it it was it was like the mm -hmm. first time I'd done a Mortal Kombat character and um, yeah 
it was kind of and also it was really fun because i dressed up doc um as johnny cage mm. so he went around with like this the open trench coat thing you know and like glasses I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 and because and you know why right no oh okay I'm Doc's, not very familiar with. Uh, well, Doc's uh, Johnny Cage has had a lot of voices over the years, but in the recent one in MK in Mortal Kombat 11, uh, Johnny Cage was voiced by Doc's voice actor. It's the same voice no. actor as Doc. Yeah. No way. <laughs> it totally is. Like what you should do is, um, like, I'm sure you can recognize like vo- Doc's voice anyway. So just go to YouTube after this. Uh-huh. Uh, do a search on Mortal Kombat 11 Johnny Cage intros or whatever whatever kind of comes up for Johnny Cage for MK11 and it's like oh my god that's that's totally Doc. <laughs> no way that's yeah. so it, it made it extra cool like it kind of kind of because it kind of matched up because I was actually thinking well should I do this or that and then I, I realized oh yeah that's right Doc is voiced by that by this guy so it's like yeah that was it was pretty awesome I might that's have to re really- I have to make, like remake her as a non non no death character at some point but i'll let her uh rest in peace for now and yeah. she'll have to be a revenant some other time <laughs> you know what you could do or, or, this is something that i've been thinking about doing but i've just been lazy mm-hmm. is uh we all know that uh oh what's his, I, I forget the actor's name i think it's uh darren norris mm. he does a lot of voices but he also did a a voice in um Team America World Police, and he says some funny stuff in there. Mm. And I've been meaning to take sound bites <laughs> off of that and yeah. put it on my Steam de- stream deck. Yeah, and that's you could awesome. do that now with uh, with Doc. Was he like the? Um, does he did he play like the the leader guy, like the yeah, white haired leader the guy? Leader. Yes. Right. And he says some real funny stuff. Yes, some really dirty be, stuff too that we cannot do on the really, podcast for sure. It would be really funny to just have it. <laughs> Someone's like, "Dude, what did he just say?" <laughs> <laughs> that but is I've that been, is a remarkably funny movie. It really is. I want to do that with uh, other characters too in the uh, nice other you know other and then like when, so right stuff, like maybe right who's who's what? like when you're doing that class uh, or whatever or if it's like a. You know, well, Why are they talking about butterfly migration? <laughs> <laughs> you know, just odd, yeah. weird things just pop in. <laughs> right. So, like, you know, Mako has the the big role in Mean Girls, so you could pull all the Mean Girls quotes out oh, from her no and stuff way. like that. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot. I think it'd be really <laughs> funny. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I've done a lot of Galactic Seasons. In fact, once when Jade died, I spent like the next day going through like all the other servers and just kind of doing Galactic Season stuff. Uh, and I got a couple of interesting things. Um, I got like uh, a gold, one of the skiffs, one of the original like hut skiff mounts that I've never gotten before. So we're going to get oh. that on someone, which will be nice. Well, that's and cool. a couple of really cool decos and stuff like that. Um, I Did didn't you finish? Re- uh, finish what? Galactic Seasons? Oh, um, no, not not yet. Um, oh, okay, okay. Sorry. Um, about three quarters of the way, like 80, oh. 75, 80, somewhere in there. Still a ways yeah. to go. Uh, a lot of the good stuff, of course, is back ended. So we're we're going to be getting some, you know, some more ultimate packs and some some stuff like that, like pretty soon, which mm-hmm. will be good. I also got like I've gotten ultimate packs on, of course, on every other server at this point because I'm still oh because that's, that's right, what I'm doing is I'm doing it on all these other servers. That's a- and I still say it's a really like it's a perfectly cromulent use of your time. Uh, mm-hmm. Absolutely. So you know, like if you're if you're a heavy Swotor player, just make a character, get them up to level ten, you know, ten, so they can do conquest stuff, uh, and then you know, just log in every day and and just get the twenty five thousand and get your two hundred thousand every week. And even if you just do that, you'll get most of the way through the season if you're very if you're very steady about it. And mm-hmm. it really doesn't take that long. So. I'm, you know, we've done that on, we've talked about that on tip of the week before. Yeah. So. And I always say, I'm going to do that. And then I start <laughs> and, then, and then within a week I forget. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So 7.3 came out. We'll be talking about that in the news, of course, later, but uh, I did do it. Uh, first day I did it on Republic side main and today I did it on empire side main. I didn't nice. have time to do the flashpoint again, but I did all the other stuff all the way through the, uh, the big meeting at the end of it, which I won't cool. spoil for anyone, but um, yeah, the, a lot of good story. I thought, um, kind of, I was kind of surprised by how, like, 
in some ways though like how little actually changed like i'm i'm expecting i'm expecting something big from a certain big bad guy <laughs> that's been I like wonder that could be. who's been like uh kind of held captive for a while Sitting and it's like <laughs> why is he still captive at this point um and it hasn't happened yet and it's kind of surprised me <laughs> but huh. so like so i was kind of surprised by like that certain sort of big story beats didn't happen in that sense but what they did give us was actually kind of interesting and i really did enjoy it um if you have any interest in like Voss history or uh you know like like if you've we've talked about this before too where like there's a lot of Voss history that's sort of hidden yeah. in like little pieces of all the different class stories. Like almost every one of them touches on sort of this Voss history thing. Um, especially if you're doing like anything that touches with Selma Kaur. There's also the thing where mm -hmm. the emperor himself gets trapped, uh, at, you know, inside Sith a Voss warrior. person. Yeah, this is that's the warrior one. Um, you also like in another story, you find out that, you know, the Voss uh, and the Gormak were originally one species. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's pretty clear that like Selma Kaur had a lot to do with like the splitting up of the Voss and the Gormak. It may have er even originally had something to do with the species split up, but it definitely had a lot to do with like why they were at war for so long. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. And you'll also learn, but in, in this story, you'll actually learn a lot about some about that, but also like how they're sort of like trying to come back together and have difficulty because of all the history of violence that there is between them. Mm -hmm. And there's also some interesting bits about, um, like Voss mystics and, um, versus their interpreters and stuff like that. So really good stuff. Um, some nice sauna ray stuff of, as well as you might expect since you know mm -hmm. she's your one of your alliance commanders and she is a Voss mystic <laughs> yeah that's um, some cool stuff yeah so it's so a lot of good stuff there and i'm I'm looking forward to i was kind of hoping there'd be some like um saboteur stuff that really wasn't uh, there's a couple of flirts that you can do like if you're romancing theron which my um lilu character was as sort of the corbin Dallas you know equivalent on the empire side and yeah good stuff though um good stuff and it was interesting that the um there was no separate reputation track it seems to just use yeah. the, boss, the regular boss reputation so that was interesting yeah, yeah and some of the uh vendors use mm -hmm. tech points uh, right instead tech, in, yeah tech frags instead tech frags of and credits other, as, yeah. instead of like you have to be this level of rep because pretty much anyone who's done you know the game for years right. will pretty much be maxed out and boss which rep. i think is really cool because they're only it's only like 250 tech frags mm -hmm. and then credits to get an item which is really great if you're doing what i do and that's getting conquest on a bunch of different characters i'm constantly having to buy stuff to get rid of my tech frags right. so being able to go and buy decos with it for yeah. only you know 250 that's 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 fantastic i really that's like nice. yeah, really having is. a way to spend those and get something that's and I, unique right and i did get a drop that was one that was from the vendor i found out later on so i didn't have to buy that one or i won't have to buy that one because i already have which it. one was it uh it was one of the voss awnings there's I a blue those. and a green one. That's yeah, what I got. I, and I got two. Actually, I got two of the blue ones. because, And then I only unlocked one because I wanted to see how much they were going for on the GTN. They weren't going for that much. So I decided oh. not to sell it right now. It was, I mean, it was still multiple million that. credits, but it was not like, you know, it wasn't 50 million or 100 million or 200 million. It was like mm -hmm. 8 million or something like that. Oh, that's, yeah. But, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, there's actually, there's been, you know, all the changes to how like credits are moved around and stuff like that so i right. i found out, like i was deleting jade and it was like um and i was gonna send some stuff because my legacy oh, bank is really full so i was gonna send some right. legacy stuff send some of the things that she was gonna to keep before i deleted her because that's the law you know that's the law you have to just delete the <laughs> the the no death character that's if they die. The rule, you can't, you can't just leave them to sort of forget and no, ooh, maybe uh, pick them up again yeah. someday when you've forgotten no yeah, yeah you have to delete them that's, so well that's part of it too that's part of people watching it watching yeah exactly you delete it right <laughs> delete it. Boop. so she's gone oh, but gosh. um so but yeah and i was like mailing off these like because i had sent a few pieces of gear that she was going to like level into eventually and they were still in her mail. And so I was going to mail them back. And it's like, but I'd already transferred her credits pretty much into the thing. And it's like, mm -hmm. oh, 
that's right. I, I don't have any credits. And then I look down, it's like not 100 credits. It's like, <laughs> it's like 200,000 credits or something like that. It's like, mm. ah, okay. So yes. Yeah, so even Yowch. sending, sending items even to your own legacy is going to cost you credits, which is a little wild. Um, Wait a minute. I don't understand Just why that is a thing. However, it's putting it's, credits from a character in your legacy into the legacy bank. No, not that. Oh, okay. I was going to mail items to uh, from gotcha, this character. Gotcha. I was going to delete back to my banking alt. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And because they were like crafted implants, they were not legacy bound. They were bind on equip. Right. Because they're bind on equip, there is a cost. And so I decided to find a way mm -hmm. to put them into the banking alt. And anyway, if you send bound to legacy stuff, even really good stuff like you know end game gear with augments and stuff in it. Mm -hmm. But if it's bound to legacy, it won't do that cost thing. It'll just be 100 credits, like a regular mail. Oh, that's cool. That's so, cool. so, so right. yeah. So, I mean, if you're having to move stuff around, try to move over just legacy type <laughs> stuff because it, it's <laughs> right. really expensive. I'm gonna, I'm actually going to have to clear out my inventory of my legacy bank to make out some room to figure, you know, because like it's ridiculous to like spend, you know, to make a new brand new character and then have to, if I decide to make some, some gear for them to right. like, you know, spend like 50 million credits just to get it to them when I can put them in the legacy bank instead. But I don't, I can't right now cause I have no room. So it's a little I crazy. I clean my legacy bank on Monday. <laughs> well, you are smarter <laughs> than me. <laughs> that is a good like, move. This thing's getting full. <laughs> Tip of the week, man. That is a really yeah. good idea right now. Uh, if you're, if your legacy bank is full or getting full, like you're going to need it more because you, you're not going to want to spend some of the credits that they're asking for. And we're going to be talking about that a little bit more of that in the news as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and we might as well roll right in the tip of the week because this is all time kind of tip of the week type stuff. Right. Um, so, yeah. So if you need to finish for Galactic Seasons, one, this is all from me because whatever, uh, to finish one of the finish 15 missions on a trooper, finish 15 missions on a, trooper or agent or you know or a inquisitor or consular you know any of those um the cartel companion missions that like if you've got like the act dog but you haven't actually gotten it for that character yet but you've like unlocked it for your account mm -hmm. those actually count as a mission because you 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 talk you unlock an item right it gives you a mission yeah. then you go talk to the guy and finishing the mission gives you the companion that is a mission it does count so if you've <laughs> like say, and we had an unlock sale recently, so I have a lot of companions that I have sort nice. of gathered on one character or another and then unlocked. So uh, on a couple of these other servers, I actually just, I was like, okay, this is taking too long to do 15 missions, you know, as a, as a, as a whatever. So I just went to the fleet and just unlocked, uh, like I needed like nine more missions done. So I just unlocked nine of these companions that's funny and we're done <laughs> that's, mission that's awesome. accomplished it was all good <laughs> so yeah so you can do that so so yeah you don't have to like if you're suffering through like oh my god it's taking forever to get even one mission done and i just don't have time that's a that's an easy way to get a few more done and you're good um another one uh for 7.3 vos just fyi for people it, one of the things I actually liked about the Voss storyline that they gave us in uh, 7.3 is that they didn't force any companion on you. Like for for a long time now, all the story pretty much has had, okay, you have to have, you know, Shay with you. Ha you have to have Tau Adair with you. You have to have, you know, Mandalorian, random Mandalorian number three mm -hmm. with you. Um, it's and it's all these specialized com companions. Your other companions aren't available and go away. And it's it's all a big you know whatever. You can actually use whatever companion you want in seven point three. The only thing I'm going to say here is like unfortunately like there's no companion reactions. I didn't see a single. I had Risha out the whole the whole time and I was watching mm -hmm. for reactions. I didn't see a, a reaction the entire time. So I don't think they actually coded any in. So hmm. just use whatever companion you want. Enjoy it. And just go with it, and don't worry about the, and it. You know, it can be one of the act dog type ones if you want, because there's not going to be any reactions anyway. Um, Interesting. Yep, and I said code here in the thing because we're going to do the first uh, jetpack code. So the jetpack is actually really cool. 
Kitty's gonna do some randomness here and <laughs> give someone to give someone a code. So this is the jetpack that the yeah for the for the the various folks who make uh, Swotor content. So it's us. It's you know Kitty Kisses own stream is actually part of it too. Swotorista. There's a bunch of them, and we're all being given these codes. So uh, and it's just like any other code in the game. You know you unlock it once and every character gets it. The jetpack is actually really nice. Uh, there is a version on the on the GTN. Uh, sorry, the well the cartel market and probably the GTN as well. Um, if it unless it goes for more than a billion. Uh, and it's it's very nice. It's actually um, it doesn't have a flare, but it does change the exhaust colors based on whatever exhaust of your weapon is being used, which is really cool. So you oh, can cool. actually yeah, and it actually I tried it with several, and it lo it looks good with pretty much any of them. But it's kind of fun to actually just change them around and see what it looks like. So cool. All right, so Kitty, do you have a code winner for us i do and i'm gonna drop it in chat here three two one squishy twitchy woo squishy all right congratulations all right congratulations squishy and let me go ahead and do a little thing here okay Four, six, and seven. i will drop this into chat and say that uh and if see, you have any um squishies if you have any squishy. tips, please send them to utinicast at utinicast mm -hmm. dot at gmail dot com before our next show for a chance to win a Don Fon or three or M eight R the M eight three R Droid Pet Code or a M two B nine Droid Pet Code courtesy of Bioware plus a four hundred and fifty cartel cone woo woo. code and right there in chat. So if you have any, copy paste that. And do it. Send them in. Get those 450 cartel coins, you guys. All right, and I've sent Squishy Twitchy the uh, jetpack code. So congratulations and awesome. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And I've and I've marked it on the prize code list as well, so we won't accidentally give it twice or anything silly like that. Oh, and by the way, I don't know if this happened to you, but uh, Swotor, the official Swotor account, and. She confirmed it was actually Jackie uh, in, in chat. Came by my stream the other day, which is really nice. Oh, cool. And she even uh, she even threw out a code, too. So if oh, uh, awesome. so yeah, so if Swotor happens to drop by in these, you know, first few days of 7.3, um, they might, uh, you know, it's usually going to be Jackie, I assume. But it can't, right. I don't think it has to be. Uh, but they might drop a, a jetpack code just in general. And then whoever grabs it first becomes the winner, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, she's done it before with uh, I uh, with a different code, and it's just like boom. Like, hey, Whoa! Yeah, Jackie is awesome. <laughs> she is really yeah. awesome. She, she is awesome. All right, so that was really good, and uh, lots of lots of interesting seven point three stuff. Um, yeah, and just kind of watch, um, watch out for like credit things, like little credit accidental credit things that you might not realize are there, like when you're mailing stuff to your own characters and stuff like that. Just Take take a glance down. Make sure you're not accidentally spending, you know, five hundred thousand credits to mail something that you you forgot. Uh, one other thing that I thought was uh, unusual is they kind of they they changed how the mail looks, um, but also they changed something in the GTN where when you're mailing something and then you click on it, it used to be that as soon as you started typing, it would start the numbers. Like so, I'm used to like. If I'm selling something, I'm just start typing it in and it's done. What it's doing now is when you first click, the first number you press doesn't actually go in. Instead, it just clears the other numbers. That's all it's doing. And then it'll start letting you type. So it's really easy to accidentally sell for something for roughly 10% of what you were trying to sell it for <laughs> because one of the digits didn't go out. So oh, be, right. be wary of that if you're, if you're on the GTN right now. Uh, anyway. That was, uh, let's see. So we've got, hmm, uh, the uh, mind trap next. So yeah, we had, um, it's kind of funny because this is an idea that I was, I had actually texted you about Kitty and, and then, uh, and then so Teresa did her big, uh, she did like a huge tier list on stream, which was really fun. And she actually went through one by one and everyone sort of voted on, like what tier each romance uh, oh, you know, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. in the game uh, landed at. And of course, you know, understandably, like, you know, most of the 
class ones were a little higher and like some of the weird one-off ones were usually a little bit lower and stuff like that. Um, but the, the idea I had had, and I just went ahead and just kind of tied it into uh, her thing, is what class companion would you like to romance that we can't? And if it was, uh, and I wanted to put Gus Tuno, but I decided not to. Uh, <laughs> and partly in honor of Sor Teresa's romance tier list. I said partly just because I had already, I was already kind of planning on doing this and it's like, oh, right. this is a perfect time to do this because she's got everyone thinking about the class romances and or all the romances anyway. And so, and Sor Teresa did, did uh, chime in and stuff. So thank you, Sor Teresa as well and for being a, a good sport about that. So the options yeah. that I put in uh, were Theron Cedrax, uh, Galt Renault, Lord Scourge, and Lieutenant Pierce. And while I was doing this, and I even tweeted this out as well, while I was researching this poll, because I did go through all the class companions to figure out what four made the most sense, but also just to like, you know, make sure I wasn't forgetting anyone important, I kind of realized that all of the non-droid female companions are romanceable. Like there's not a single single female character who's not romanceable. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. hmm. Yeah, so that was interesting. So, like, apparently, if you're a female companion, you're going to be romanceable, apparently. And, uh, oh. yeah. Also, all the ones where gender shouldn't matter are coded male. So, like, Blizz is a male. Brunemark is a male. Like, you know what I mean? Like, right, right. they're not, you know, there's there's not a female, just sort of randomly female, like, alien either. Mm-hmm. Or where there is a, sort of a female female aspect they get sexualized so scorpio is sexualized holiday is sexualized very interesting um i mean obviously Mm -hmm. there was sort of a limited number of companions you can make sort of excuses but it's a little uh, it's a little iffy to me that uh when i did a poll like this i could only come up with male characters because all the female ones were not available uh, so yeah, there we go. So Theron Cedrex, Galt Renault, Lord Scourge, Lieutenant Pierce, or of course, you know, um, Gus Tuno, if, uh, if you swing that way. Poor, poor Gus. I wanted to put Gus on there so bad, but I feel so I, sorry for Gus. I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to make, uh, to get Gus, uh, Gus slapped around. Again. <laughs> so, <laughs> so who did you vote for, uh, Kitty? Oh, of course, Lord Scourge. Lord Scourge, Who doesn't yes. want to be all swaddled in those big red arms? <laughs> uh, I can understand that. We can talk about that, too. Um, I, I voted for Theron Sidrax. Um, you actually can v- flirt with him a little bit, and then it all falls apart because he realizes he has a thing That's, for Holiday, and it, it's right. never going to go which anywhere is, else. Which is nuts, and I love it. It is nuts, and I love it too. And I still, I still think he's one of the more interesting out of these four. I think he's yeah. probably the most interesting one uh, on a romance right. angle. Um, I think R- Galt Renault, of course. You know, like we know he's he's, you know, he is a romantic go. person at least, or at least he's mm-hmm. ha- he's had a thing with Hilo f- for a long time. Yeah. Um, Lieutenant Pierce is interesting as well. Uh, he is sort of flirtable. There's a couple of quick flirts and then it just sort of never happens after that. Like it, uh, th- it does happen. I mean, you do end up um, together for an evening. Right. Like that's it. And then it just kind of stops. Yeah. And then it's gone. <laughs> and I like him. I think he's a really cool character. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the interesting thing about Lord Scourge is like until very recently, and certainly during the class story, like, he he's non-romanceable because he is completely like cut off from like almost every feeling emotion, and emotion. Touch. Yeah, I mean, taste, there's there's certain like anger, smell. sort of a lot of the Sith emotions he can still sort of feel, but like everything else is kind of gone, including yeah, like yeah. you said, touch and and color and uh, all kinds of things like that. So, but yeah, a lot of people like Lord Scourge. He was the far and away the winner with forty two point two percent of the vote. We got a. Th- pretty good 313 votes out of this as well so thank you everyone for voting and for retweeting um and everyone else was really neck and neck so lieutenant pierce did squeak out second place with 21.1 percent of the vote Uh, yep and galt (laughs) renault uh just a bit behind that at 18.5 percent and theron cedrax just a hair behind him at 18.2 percent so i actually voted for the least popular one which um 
I, I only mention because I don't know for for some reason I maybe it's because I'm actually making the polls most of the time. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm usually not getting like the le- the one with the least votes. Uh, you know what I mean? Because it's, right. it's the it's kind of in my headspace. So it's kind of it was kind of interesting to see that anyway though. So do yeah, but ever, but the, the cool. So go ahead. Uh, do you ever watch um, Archer? I love Archer. Yeah. Okay, Krieger. Mm-hmm. Yes. Theron is Krieger. Oh, I remember okay. making that. I'm watching. Uh, uh, I was watching Archer. And Theron like, Sedrax. Yeah, Theron Sedrax is Krieger of Swotor. Wow, I did not know that. That's another one. We're gonna have to add that. No, to no, the no, list. no, 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 not not the actor, the character, oh. because Krieger dates that hologram. Oh, the, the, right, right, right. <laughs> and I remember going. This dates is the anime really hologram. Famil- this is really familiar. Right. And I'm like, that's the Holiday Theron and Theron. Sedrax. <laughs> <laughs> so now whenever Theron comes in, I'm always like, Krieger. Maybe someone on Archer was a SWOTOR <laughs> fan back in the day because, yeah. you know, it came out, you know, a few years after SWOTOR. I yeah. believe would have been the the first uh, ep- uh, first season of Archer. Uh, it's been around mm-hmm. a long time, too, though. So may- I could be yeah, wrong about that. That's funny. Yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> I was like, wow. Um, so, yeah, the interesting thing about, about Lord Scourge, I was going to say, is... Um, now that the emperor has been finally vanquished, he's actually like the yeah he sort of reverted like he, the the in, invulnerability and the immortality that he had has been stripped away because it was part of the emperor's power, and with mm-hmm. that, it sort of like returned all of his regular emotions and feelings and stuff. So he's actually more romanceable now than ever. <laughs> yeah, he. Like, it's I would I, I would argue that it would have been a big, big mistake to try to make a, a romance character originally, but now he's actually like it's actually quite possible, and it'd be mm-hmm. actually a very interesting one too. Yeah, for no small reason because he's like hugely old, like he's you know he's had like a crazy life. He's but, wise yeah. beyond his years. <laughs> well, I guess not in that his case, right? Right. Yeah. And go ahead. I love that they gave Scourge an arc like that because, and I don't want to, there's some cutaway scenes in the new stuff that actually has Scourge in it. Mm -hmm. And you get to see the Scourge before you met him. And then, you know, if you've played the uh, Knight class character, um, the Jedi Knight, you get to meet him and then follow him through his whole storyline he's got a great arc yeah uh, and i just i really appreciate that in in the writing and i i think it's i think it's really cool also i'd like to see a a comic book of scourge and kira's escapades while you were in carbonite <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh let's see there's a fair good number of responses a lot of people just saying like they want to see more romances of various sorts either mm-hmm. you know or more romances of the non class companions um so Teresa wants to see expanding of existing romances and expe- especially like some of the ones that sort of got mm-hmm. returned but you know you get like one one conversation with them and then that's been all that's happened so far mm-hmm. uh which all makes sense it's not you know really the question that i was kind of going for but it it's totally understandable Mm-hmm. Um, one said, isn't Galt married to Hilo? <laughs> well, yes and no. In the, in the class story, uh, like if we're just talking about the class story, you know, Hilo is like really on the outs with, uh, Galt. Like she hated mm-hmm. Galt. There's a whole, there's a whole thing about that. And I don't think they right. were ever married. In fact, I yeah. think they would laugh at you if you said <laughs> oh, married. Yeah, point and laugh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Especially Hilo, right? <laughs> All right. And, uh. Let's see. Galt Renault is my favorite because his voice actor is Gordy from Ned's Declassified. See, like there's a lot of people love the the whole connection of the voice actors to other things. I, I love that. Yeah, um, I love that. Someone, someone said Jason, but with a Jedi Knight or Consular. In other words, sort of like expand uh, the like some of the romances to other no, other classes i mean obviously that, that would, would be crazy. that would be very cool one said holiday holiday <laughs> i think that's, that's a, awesome <laughs> that's be your own why you know why why have theron cedrix as a companion when you can be theron cedrix right right uh let's see and some other ones too um Let's see. And then Theron would be fun just to see how Holiday feels about the whole proposition. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so, and that was from uh, some of one of the people on Mastodon. So, thank you to the Mastodon people too. I yeah, I didn't actually change the numbers, but because they're still relatively small, but we do we do always put the poll out on Mastodon as well. All right, that'll bring us to the hollow feed. So, off to the news. A uh, couple of quick ones. Relics of the Gree is now live. It's going to be live for this next week. And that usually means that the guild's going to be doing, um, you know, the, the Gree boss on Friday, which is cool. And let's see. And then Pirate Incursion will be coming. The, uh, there's going to be an off week. And then Pirate Incursion will be June 27th through May the 4th. And there we go. July so. the 4th? Sorry, did I say May the 4th? Yeah, I said May the 4th because of You're Star Wars. You're just into Star didn't Wars I? Day. <laughs> July 4th, yes. So we're, it's going all the way for nine months or 12, yeah. 10 months or however many months that would be. Uh, no, do, June 27th <laughs> to July 4th. So there we go. Um, they also had some up, upgrade or updates as to what the Galactic Season objectives will be. I did put it in the show notes, but it's the sort of thing that's not really a lot of, it's not very exciting yeah. to kind of talk about. Nope. They kind of, they cycle through. You'll see them over and over again uh, as, as things go on. It's all good. Uh, Cartel Market Editions, there's some uh, some nice stuff on the, the new 7.3 uh, Cartel uh, mar- Market stuff. The Rogue Agent Armor Set. Oh, I always I- like things that look, <laughs> you did get that already? Nice. I got the one with the gun too because it was on sale. That's cool. Did you, you like the gun? Have you tried it? Yeah, I like the gun because it looks like that popsicle mount. You know the the one that looks like Ray's mount. Oh, okay. Oh, it's, it has that same funny. shape, like the barrel. Yeah, it has the barrel the same shape. looks like right. <laughs> yeah. It looks like that. Okay, yeah, yeah. But, we, uh, we had a couple of mounts like that too, uh, like yeah, a yeah, season or a two ago. Um, a season or two ago, they had that sort of shape of one. That's funny. Okay. Yeah. The only thing I don't like about the armor set is that it doesn't die very well. I could see sadly. that. Yeah, it looks like it has like a third color essentially, and which means gray. you're gonna get. Is it gray? Yeah. yeah so. Gray, yeah. So it's so. gonna die around the gray. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm. Unfortunate. It's still always nice to have like pieces of art gear that actually look like. Yeah. You know, the boots are really cool. Like the... actually, it's kind of cool. Like also, we we don't have a ton of like jackets that have the belt, um, over them that you can change the belt on. Mm, right. Right. Um, a lot of times, like the belt gets hidden or weird things happen. Anyway. Uh, Desert uh, Weapons Master Armor set, which is sort of like a, a Sand People sort of look. Yeah, it looks Only, cool. It's like the first Sand People one that's not like in like just desert colors necessarily. It's sort of like a mm-hmm. sort of a weird gray green color. It's kind of cool though. It dies really well. Also, that one dies. Well. <laughs> Did you yeah. get that one too? No, I had to check just, out how you just it dies. previewed it. <laughs> okay. I, I'm going to get it just <laughs> for anything. The uh, the uh, pants are really, really cool looking. It's almost like a skirt and a long skirt and pants combination. Hmm. And it dies really well with a um, a single color dye. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you go get that black one from the cartel market and it dies. It dies beautiful. Right. So That's cool. I have to get that. I have to. That's fine. I don't have a choice, Joe. Oh. Pen made pen uh, in chat made me remind of something. Sorry, this is going back to the romances real quick. He said Scratch. he joked, "I'm ha- holding out for a Skadj romance," or maybe he's not joking. I don't know, but um, it was weird because you know how Skadj has this whole arc where he um, says, I, "I there's this hut who screwed me over, and I'm going to go kill him real slow," and then he goes right. and kills him real slow and comes back and tells you all about it. Mm-hmm. And I always thought that. Um, that it was like the one from the uh anyway so what what i'm getting at is i always thought on voss that um if you're like uh, the agent that you can kill that one hut right it turns out that cannot at least canonically skadge goes and kills nemro nemro is actually killed by skadge he doesn't name him But then I I was mm-hmm. I happened to be for uh, whatever reason I was looking at Nemro on Wikipedia, and it was like oh Skadge is the one who gets him. It's not the Voss agent thing at all. Mm-hmm. It's 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 Skadge and and it's so weird that Skadge would kill him and like, but that they don't mention that it's Nemro. <laughs> it's like it's like a named uh, you know hut that yeah, you you, you deal with. Yeah, you deal with quite a bit. <laughs> you do get some good information, Doc. 
Um, yes. He tries to heal Nemro, but right. instead Skadge gets menti- him and melts him. Right. Yeah. He mentions that um, it was killed by a stupid bounty hunter. Yeah. And I always thought that was a reference, again, to the agent story, and they just assumed it was a bounty hunter, but they were wrong. No, it was it was actually a bounty hunter in the sense that it was a bounty hunter companion. Mm-hmm. That was so weird, though. Yeah, I had no yeah. idea. That was so was interesting that. to me, though. Anyway, uh, yeah, so the Cassian-inspired blaster, uh, Hermit's Vigil, so an Obi-Wan-inspired blaster, Darth Null's right. lightsaber, um, which is kind of cool. I, like I do like the Darth Null's uh, lightsaber. Yeah, and, that's pretty cool. Um, and if you see 7.3, it, it'll be like, oh, okay. Um, but yeah. anyway, <laughs> not to spoil, but you'll you'll see. You'll know what I mean. Uh, Kuat Vigilance Mount, uh, which is kind of an interesting sort of like... It's like it's kind of like one of those taxis from some of the planets. Only it's like a little stripped down version. It's like a little like mini a version. Mini slave one. It's like the yeah the Mini Cooper of <laughs> <laughs> of that kind of vehicle. <laughs> it reminds me of uh, Wally. You know something mm. that the humans would be scooting around in. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, <laughs> getting Look, fat in. <laughs> yeah, looks like it has a disc shooter on the front of it. <laughs> Oh yeah, pancake distributor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and there is the MSM Turbo Charge Jetpack, which is um, very much like the the one that you can get as a code from the various Sotor creators. Uh, you can get them from the creators, and I did mention that. You can also there's going to be other ways for you to get that jetpack as well, mm-hmm. um, because like when they do testing on the test server, they often have. You know, like when they want something in particular tested, they'll say, hey, if you test this, you know, we'll give you a code, that sort of thing. Or if you, you know, they've done, they've done it different ways, but there's other ways to get that code. However, if you, if you aren't able to get a hold of that jetpack or you just want the other one or whatever, there is another version. It's almost identical. Uh, it's basically just with a, with a red racing stripe on the back and down the sides. The, you know, the color change uh, of the exhaust to match your uh, weapon's color crystal still happens. And mm. um, the shape of the of the actual jetpack seems to be identical, as far as I can tell, as well. I kind of like previewed one and the other, and it's like, as far as I can tell, that's pretty much identical. There might be some minor, minor, minor differences other than the color. Mm-hmm. And let's see, the Rogue Agents Die Pack. I'm not sure. So tan and brown, and then brown and tan die module. Wow, that I cannot tell the difference between those two pictures. <laughs> I have to like really. It, <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it's like at a glance i would not have known that they were they were differently dyed actually oh, that's funny. but okay but if you like brown and tan or tan and brown they are now available uh the moisture farm decoration <laughs> bundle is there so lots of sort of tatooine ish uh things mm-hmm. although actually some plants too which is kind of nice right but yeah moisture farm and then the uh Restored Jedi Enclave uh, deco. That was interesting because, like, mm-hmm. um, I like I, I like wa- the whole wall of lights aesthetic of technology. Like, you know, the, oh right, the, the, it doesn't uh, mean or... anything, but it like it looks cool. Yeah, I love right. that. I, yeah. I'm a sucker for that, so that's awesome. So yeah, seven point three old wounds is now live, and we talked about that a little bit during our week. So don't have to hit it too hard here. Um, you don't have to do the flashpoint if you don't want to. You can see the whole rest of the story without doing the flashpoint. However, also, the, the flashpoint is awesome. <laughs> do the flashpoint yeah. anyway. <laughs> Sorry. You also don't have to be up to that point in the story to do the flashpoint. If you have a character that's mm. high enough level, you can send them over there and run it. Nice. Yeah. Well, that's really good. Can't do the story though. I'll bet. <laughs> no. Nope. You gotta be. Uh, you gotta be. Gotta up get to it the all story. the way past Runic. But you can go run that flashpoint. Yep, that's cool. And it is a very cool flashpoint. Uh, I haven't done it yet. Oh, okay, yeah. There's a nice little um, bonus boss you can do. Also, keep an eye out. It'll be semi-obvious because it'll be like, oh, the mission's going this way, and then there's two little long path thingies with little rooms off to the side at one point. Mm. Gee, I wonder if that's there for a reason. Yes, it's there for a reason. There's like, it's not exactly bosses, but like, you know, like semi-bosses. They're like champions. There's mm-hmm. a champion fight in each room and they tend to drop uh, decos. Like I got Ooh. like I got a pet and like two decos out of those two fights. It was really good. Nice. Um, yeah, it was really, really nice, actually. Um, the pet was, uh, what was it? 
can't remember which which critter it was a little critter pet um Voss and, donkey. I, and i hadn't had it before i'm not sure if it was com- completely new to the game i'm guessing it might be Ooh, because you know that's cool. but i don't know I, I don't know i haven't actually checked that one out it was good though it was a nice little cute little critter run, running around after me for the rest of that flashpoint uh, yeah, so so definitely check it out. There's definitely also like some people put out some good guides about um, like hidden achievements and stuff like that. And I know I've run across at least part of a couple of them, and I, I will have to check out them out later. Um, I don't know if there's any data crons. I haven't heard about that. But mm. uh, as far as I know, there haven't been any. But um, I haven't heard any. I ran I ran across one thing that I know is part of like a hidden achievement because it's like you pick up this thing that's clickable. It's like oh, and it gives you a little thing in your inventory, and you look at it, and it's like oh, now I need this other object, and then you can have a picnic. Well, I never found that other object yet, so I don't know how to do that. But I wonder if it's that because uh, I noticed that there was something that you can buy at one of the vendors. I saw the that new too. Vendors. It was I for wonder a, if it has something to do with that. The the other item you need though is a kind of tea, and the thing for that is like a it's like a Malvor like lure sort of thing. So I'm not sure yeah. what's going on with that. Maybe it is mm-hmm. part of it in the end, but it's if so, there's going to be some steps in between. I guarantee that. Right. So hmm. yeah. So there's definitely That's some. Cool, they had some fun with it, and there's like there's going to be some hidden achievement stuff. And people have put out guides if you want to know how to do them, and, but I haven't done that yet. All right. Um, so they've made the ad- the additional changes to the credit economy. So, you know, watch out when you're sending things in the mail to your own <laughs> characters because, yeah, send legacy stuff to your characters whenever possible, but other stuff is going to still cost you. Uh, use your legacy bank whenever, whenever possible as well. Mm-hmm. Progression changes, and I did notice this, and I did a little testing so we can talk about it too. To reduce the complexity of gear progression, we've removed daily resource matrices. They are gone, gone, gone. Bye-bye. So what they're doing is it's conquest comms now instead. So conquest comms, it's sort of gone by the wayside. There was a few, you'd use a few here and there for upgrading and stuff, but it wasn't really a big deal and you'd always had more than enough. At least I always did. Mm-hmm. Um, now, like they, they're sort of, they sort of reworked exactly how many you get and blah, 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 blah. But basically it's now, if you want to, instead of dailies, just use your conquest comms so if you get them from other ways great you still can have a way to upgrade a new character if you want um but yeah and i even tested it because i went i had my main character i went to the thing Mm -hmm. there was nothing i could buy from the first vendor so i bought one anyway with conquest comms and some credits and then i went to the upgrader and it yeah and that used more conquest comms and and uh and more credits and then i just Mm -hmm. sold it back because it was refundable so (laughs) cool it looks like they upped the number too that you can have yeah i think you can have 2500 now i don't know uh, or maybe it's the, the, the or maybe i'm one. thinking of something else yeah we've made right. changes to weekly and total caps of several currencies but i don't think conquest com was actually a change yeah, yeah maybe i think 2500 right. was where it has been for a while Although yeah, it was raised right. at one point it was raised at one point but uh yeah it wasn't Not, like a thousand i didn't notice something. which one they did yeah it was really low you kept having um, to leave the it actually operation. was kind of a pain yeah <laughs> Like, it actually ah, was crap. a bit of a Everybody's pain. Everybody's like, I gotta go. I gotta Let me go buy some stuff. Yeah, get, get my messages. upgrades. We'll be right back. I'm, I'm capped. capped. After every boss fight. Yeah, I'm capped. Right. I'm capped. Yeah. Um, so there were some balance changes. We've talked about that in previous uh, shows. So we're good on that. Narshana Shada Nightlife is coming back. Yay! It's not quite back yet. Uh, July 11th is when it's coming back. And then until August 22nd. So a little over a month, a month, a week, and a few days or something like that. A month and two weeks, something like that. I think that is a month and two weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that, that's going to be the Narshada Nightlife. There's going to be a high roller skiff mount, a uh, high roller armor box set, and high mm-hmm. roller armor individual pieces. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, that'll be fun. I, I usually do like some like leveling up. I do like the um, the armor set with the little glowy bits. They're sort of oh, holographically hovering off of them. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's a, the, high ro- it, the new high roller armor set is really nice. by the high roller shades. Mm, That's cool. That's nice. Oh yeah. And I tried putting the high roller shades on Doc to make him look a little bit um, <laughs> more like, uh, you know, um, like right. the Mortal Kombat ca- character, but unfortunately it didn't work on him. Like the, the, um, the effect That's wasn't weird. there. Only the, the frames were there and it just looked empty, which was very kind of disappointing. Huh. So I, I just used other goggles that I've used on for other characters instead, but I was going to use those on him. 
Um, yeah, I, I do like the that the armor set with like this holographic glowy thing over certain parts of the armor. It's a good. It style. looks like it has half a Dracula cape or collar. <laughs> right, and a sort of a half cape or something hanging down the back as well. It doesn't yeah. go all the way around, but it's kind of like uh, kind of how Tawadere's kind of goes down on one side, but not yeah, the yeah, other. Yeah. It's that sort of deal. Half a robe. Yeah, and this is like half a jacket or half a long jacket, half a short jacket. <laughs> Whatever. Oh it's yeah, fine. I see what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's cool. I hadn't seen this before. Yeah. Nice. Uh, PvP season three, Reign of Glory, is going to start on July 18th. So. It's Two is still rolling along. We still have some time on that, but it's going to be going away at some point soon. And I have to get back to that because I really haven't done very much PvP in the last few weeks, so I need to get back to that. Uh, the new season brings changes to PvP maps as well as decorations and armor sets. We've talked about the, the plans that they had for that as well. The armor sets are very sort of like demon um, samurai look. It's very cool. Yeah. Uh, it, good stuff. Yeah. It looks like... Uh... It looks like a little HK in there on that helmet too. It is a little HK ish, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's that. a really I like that armor set a lot. Yeah. I'll never get it. <laughs> uh, oh look at it looks like it has the uh, for it. Roman uh what are those olive leaves? All right, it has a laurel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Around that's his, a really cool set. Too. It's a nice it kind of yeah. reminds me of Conan the Barbarian's buddy uh Mm. Yamatai or whatever his name was. Oh yeah, that Yamatai. is cool. Yep, I know you. I know who you're talking about. I can't remember his name. Though. It's been thief. ages. And the Archer, thief. right? <laughs> I am Zubatai. But I, sm- I smell a new cosplay for you, Kitty. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> but yeah, you should you should go for it. You know, just just do the PvP. It's you know, it's all good. But then I have to PvP. All right, and Life then is hard. Yeah. <laughs> So apparently there's like a preview window bug. So when you, the preview window resets when other players approach and are within a certain range of the window, which is very weird. Team is investigating to find a fix. I love that. I love how weird like, bugs how can does be. That work? How does that even work? And who, who found out that when people approach? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, because somebody was like, okay, what's causing this? And put the time and effort into figuring out You walked out through my causes. preview window. <laughs> you got peanut butter on my chocolate. Got yep. butter on my butter. Uh, let's see. So we've kind of gone through a lot of these. These were the, the, the patch notes is basically what we're at now. Yeah. Um, let's see. They removed outdated ability tutorials from Knights of the Fallen Empire chapters. So that's kind of nice. Because I think that's the one where it just kind of automatically pops up, even, you know, right. even though you've got like, you know, Legacy 50. Takes all of your stuff away. Increase single lightsaber companion damage by six percent. So I guess they they're sort. I think they're sort of making it so like if you have, if you're use, if you've been using a dual wield companion simply because it does a little more damage, they're kind of like smoothing that away now. Uh, it, it seems like anyway. They didn't say that, but like it's been in the game for a long time, so it's probably that's probably something what they're doing. All right, let's see. Let's see, Starship Hook. Oh, the Starship Hook outside the Mekshaw Hideout Stronghold is now visible and interactable. Yay! Yes, I've got a ship ready! <laughs> Relocated the Mekshaw Hideout Stronghold directory to each faction's arrival point on Mekshaw. So that's nice. So it will be at a more, I guess, I don't know. I had never exited that one. Yeah, I haven't either. Mekshaw, I was so just not sure thinking, where, wait a minute, where, where what go? weird place they decided to put you, but apparently now it's just <laughs> a, your regular <laughs> arrival point, so it'll, it, will, yeah. it will look very normal now. Yeah. But uh, if an NPC walks close, you go to the opposite faction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it insta-gives you. You go there, it insta-gives you. <laughs> that would be funny. All right. Let's see. Da, 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 da. All players can now use the following mounts as artifact equipment authorization is no longer needed to use them. And then there's a bunch of... What? Uh, yeah, apparently... Uh, that They're talking about the thing that if you're not a sub, then you have to have the artifact equipment authorization to use like purple oh, right, right, gear. Right. Okay, okay. Well, some mounts are purple and apparently gotcha. they, they were being caught by this as well. So they, they uh, made it so that that's not happening anymore. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, let's see couple of like a lot of bug fixes as you expect um things that couldn't be unlocked properly now can 
Uh, reputation version of Mira's armor set can be unlocked in collections, stuff like that. Um, right. Daily resource matrices have been removed from the game. They've been replaced by Conquest comms at equal value. Uh, commendations awarded from group finders role in need increased to 15 up from 5. The weekly cap of com Conquest comms is 6,000 up from 2,500 and the total cap Hallelujah. to 4,000 from 2,500. I could have sworn it still said 2,500. Maybe I was reading wrong or I don't know. I will have to recheck that. I uh, thought it was, I thought you were I could right. have swore it still said yeah, 2,500. Me too. Me too. Um, I could weekly, have sworn I just looked at it too. Yeah, today. exactly. Weekly cap of uh, flashpoint stabilizers to three thousand from twelve hundred. The weekly cap of warzone accelerants to two thousand from twelve hundred, and the weekly cap of operation catalysts for two two thousand from twelve hundred. Uh, let's see. And then the currencies required to upgrade gear have been adjusted to reduce the number of currencies, which is nice. Okay. Transferring credits between players through the mail or direct trade is subject to a fee of 8% uh, of the credits being transferred paid by sender. Um, and be careful because like people, there, we've, we'll talk about this later, it's not intended, but if you're mailing credits to your other characters right now, at least some of the times, it can be bugged and it'll actually do that credit cost. It's not intended, but it's apparently happening. So use your, use your, um, use your bank, your your bank instead uh, to transfer um, between characters it value seems like a, credits between characters seems like a big hunk of change too you'll you mm -hmm. shouldn't notice it <laughs> but, but i check. get clicking and it's easy to yeah it's easy to just zip it yeah. um the transfer of some high value items through mail or direct trade is subject to a credit fee based on its value paid by the sender it says some high value items but i mean i actually i guess that's true ish but it seemed like to be pretty high like like I said, it included all these like crafted implants, which were kind of like medium to low level ones. And I think there was a couple 61s and 65s, but not exactly like end game. We're not talking about that. Um, yeah. Legacy bank is your it, friend. It says and... the fees don't apply when sending characters on the same account, but they did. They absolutely did. At least for now, maybe they're, they're probably working on this one too, but yeah, that doesn't seem right. I'm yeah. sure that that's some sort of, bug. they removed the tax evasion guild perk from the guild perk rotation. So that one is not there anymore. Um, it, it's, an, it's another way to you know increase the co uh, credit th credit sinks. Right. And let's see, a bunch of fixes, fix, 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 fix. And let's see, let's just go ahead and get past that because like we've talked about a lot of these on the past yeah. ones too. Um, Combat styles. Yep. Yeah. We've talked about those too, but um, mm -hmm. yeah. Let's see, like scrounging, oh, yeah. dirty fighting, scrounging has been redesigned. It causes Shrap Bomb to refund two energy each time it ticks. So we, uh, yeah, we now know. Uh, it used to be like crit based, so now it's like Shrap Bomb based. It's all mm -hmm. good. Anyway, so yeah, little changes like that. Um, those are in the show notes. They're also on SWOTOR.com, of course. Let's, let's keep going. All right, good. Because we have some other things to talk about for sure, besides like minor patch changes. Um, all right. And, uh, let's see, Jackie did, uh, write about the, the jetpack 7.3 comes a new community mount, the Mandalorian heavy jetpack parts of the mount will take on the color of the crystal you have equipped in your main hand. This particular skin will only be available from staff content creators and by participating in various testing initiatives when available. So, you know, staff, like, like when Jackie swings by your stream, um, she might drop off a, a code or two for people, um, content creators. So we've been given codes and then um, participating in various testing initiatives when available. So if you're useful on the PTS, they will often reward that. And yeah, you can see how it, it changes the, um, it's, it's a little harder to know. So there's some little light, light things on the top corners as well that do change. Right. Yeah. But it's mostly, that. you'll notice mostly the uh, exhaust. Um, but it's really cool. And then there is a variation of the jetpack that can be found on the cartel market called the MSM uh, turbocharged jetpack. It's, it is, I swear, the same exact model. It's just got a little red racing stripe down the middle of the back and down the sides. Um, so there, there's a few sort of more important like bugs and changes that we want to talk about here. Um, so there, there was one of the changes is um, when people are new to guilds they won't have access to the guild bank unless they're the guild leader so that's uh, an intended change i guess this is probably to either keep people from 
it's either something about credit sells sales or it's to you know or it's to avoid um avoiding the taxes by just briefly coming into a guild using the bank and then leaving mm -hmm. you know or um, it's probably a bunch of reasons why they're doing this but anyway the, the original guild leader is supposed to still have ac uh, access starting at guild creation the change only applies to new members in the guild including the, the that includes the ones that help form it and they're they're gonna look at uh, you know maybe answering more questions later on if you have further feedback please add it to our credit economy thread so yeah this is probably i think it's partly to avoid tax evasion partly to avoid like you know credit sales people like you know having it so easy like making it a little harder for credit sale mm -hmm. things and stuff like that yeah exactly so that they and and a certain amount of like um i get it of yeah. like you know uh, tr trying to keep people from screwing over other people um by you know using the the guild bank when they really shouldn't have it like if you accidentally yeah. have someone to have access that you didn't really mean it you know anyway so all right uh repairs and summons should uh repairs and summons should remain unaffected by the change the guild membership in this case should be looking at your legacy to determine if you have access your alt should remain affected unaffected in terms of giving things to new members during the period may still trade or mail the item or credits as necessary to the new member the restriction is largely added to reduce the need for taxation at the guild bank level but there were some additional behaviors we saw during a review of guilds that this helps to discourage uh, we'll continue to monitor behavior to help us determine if we need to make other changes. There we go. And let's see, adding known list uh, issues. Um, Imperial characters may receive mail from the opposite faction's representative. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Play, yeah. Mar the Merlago or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Players may uh, get temporarily stuck in a cutscene state in what remains of Clan Kadera. Uh, there's a work around. If that happens, press escape, and the player will be able to advance the mission. Nice. Um, Galactic Season 4 bonus points are awarded only to the player that strikes the killing blow on the mutated Geonosian Queen boss for the Lair of the Mountain Queen season objective. So watch out for that one, because um, right now it's not giving it to everyone as intended. Sometimes Oof. people are being charged for sending um, credits to alts inside their own legacy. Like I mentioned you before, go. you're supposed to be taxed if you're sending it to other, sending credits to other people, uh, eight at eight percent. But apparently, it is sometimes happening um, for people within their own legacy. Mm -hmm. um, in one case, uh, although it's like it's the taxes that for items is supposed to be for sort of high lo higher level items, but um, pay someone paid twenty you know, or at least was going to be paid. I'm not sure if they actually went through with it or not, but they were going to be have to pay 25 million, which is a lot for transferring 10 adrenals and 10 med packs to a friend. And like raid uh, night, right? This was not intended. Moving this over to the bug report subforms as this is not working as intended. The team will be looking into a fix for it. Nice. There we go. Also, if you happen to, if you want, if you're looking at streaming Swotor um, using discord, it's uh, currently bugged i don't happen to use discord for streaming but mm -hmm. um you know if someone is it causes the game client to crash apparently uh is the, mm. is the specific bug and jackie said thank you for the reports the team was able to reproduce this issue and found the following workarounds sharing the screen but not the application um, allows the game to be streamed so in other words like if you're do i don't know about the the discord version but in obs you can actually share an entire game and it'll basically take the game and you know it, you're actually sharing that game even like even if you mm -hmm. minimize it it would still share yep um but instead you can sh share the screen instead and that that, that will work instead sharing yeah. sotor without sound permissions allow for it to be streamed so of something course. about discord loving to take over mics and everything like that well Loves it's taking it. over it's taking over sound permissions yeah. from other games too apparently yes everyone loves discord for this sort of shenanigans yes discord definitely prioritizes uh the microphones cameras all that stuff they so. love to do that but yeah. to be fair like so does zoom so does a lot of yep. other programs too so yeah yeah um uh, and i must say obs is pretty good about like being pretty chill about that like it usually doesn't change my microphone settings no. or anything like that it just sort of accepts them i like obs for that reason but anyway yeah, o obs yeah. will take over your camera if you're using a zoom call though so always turn obs off then you'll have to turn if you're it doing off, a, yeah. a zoom right I've, i wonder 
even it, even if you tab your webcam and, and unclick the eye so it's not active, does it still do that? Yeah, for some reason, you just I, haven't been I able to make forget. it work. I'll forget, and I'm like, why can't I use my camera in the Zoom call? Ah, okay. And I'm like, oh crap, that's right, OBS is on. Right. Just turn OBS on, and uh, yeah, I'll bet you though, if you turn the eye off and turn the turned it off, you might have to restart that, OBS. You could, yeah, you could actually uh, you might disable to, disable yeah. the camera. Right. Maybe or turning the eye work. off. I imagine it yeah. would work. You might have to restart OBS work. to sort of like let Zoom sort of like retake the camera and yeah. tell the and then t retell Zoom to take the camera and then restart OBS with the with the webcam turned off. I'll bet mm. you can make it work, but anyway. yeah, I bet you could too. Yeah. All right. Anyway, the, uh, so anyway, Discord a little tricky to to stream Swotor using Discord at the moment, and there's a couple workarounds that we talked about, and the the team will be looking in this further to find a fix. Right. So when I was in Canada, of course, <laughs> the, I thought about this. As what soon is as I probably saw it. <laughs> the largest story in but in Swotor history for like. I'm trying to think of like what's a large what what kind of made a bigger splash than this particular uh, news item, and it's like I can't think of anything short of you know since like year one when they went to s from sub to free to play plus sub. Yeah, I think that that's that's about it. <laughs> it and you it were made away. a bigger splash than like uh, than uh, you know like expansion news. It made oh, yeah. a, it was crazy. Was anyway. It was it, it was funny. I read it and I went. <laughs> I, go, I almost uh sent you a text but i was like ah, he's on vacation i did like, find about it out that night when i was kind of back within uh wi-fi and it's like of course we're you know of course we're, know. we're taking a week off when this happens <laughs> all right so this is the of course i'm referring of course to the broadsword thing going on so what we know what we don't know well we don't know a whole heck of a lot for sure actually right now that's right what seems to have happened is someone uh, leaked uh, and to the press, the press uh, then came out with this story that um, EA is uh, nearing an agreement to move the ongoing uh, development and operation of SOTOR from Bioware to a third party studio, Broadsword Online Games. So. Mm -hmm. We're going to kind of, that was actually from like the IGN Rebecca Valentine uh, article at, that came out at the time. I, we're not going to continue reading it partly because it's not really fair to just read someone's work, but and also, um, ready, yeah, man. to just straight, straight out. I mean, it's, it's kind of different if it's SWOTOR stuff, but this is someone else's work. But also because like it gets into stuff that hasn't really been confirmed by SWOTOR or, or anyone else. But let's, yep. yeah, so let's, um, let's talk about it anyway, as best, as best we can. Um, Right. So EA did address the news, so we can actually talk about this, because this is straight up in, uh, uh, from EA itself. And it said, Almost 12 years after launch, Star Wars The Old Republic remains a success and continues to grow its dedicated and passionate community. We're so proud of the work the team has done, and the future of the game and the community continues to be very bright. We're evaluating how we give the game and the team the best opportunity to grow and evolve, which includes conversations with Broadsword, a boutique studio that specializes in delivering online community-driven experiences. Our goal is to do what is best for the game and its players. End quote. And we're not going to, like I said, we're, you can look up this article if you want to kind of know the, the stuff that hasn't really been confirmed yet. But that's that's from EA. We can say that. And then um, we also have what has uh, come out from Keith. So Keith on the forums made two mm -hmm. short uh, announcements. Uh, hi, all. And this is from Keith Kanek, who's basically running things for SWOTOR right now. No doubt you've read the reports that Electronic Arts uh, is evaluating opportunities to give the game and the team a new home, which includes conversations with Broadsword. Unfortunately, we can't answer any questions you may have at this time. Of course they can't. This is like, you know, yeah. this is like business secrecy 101. I, like, you cannot talk about this sort of stuff until yeah. it's until they're ready to go public with it, if it's even happening. But let, for the sake of argument, we're going to kind of assume that this is semi-serious because like... Keith is talking about it on the forums and he even mentions right. the word broadsword like okay so we're we're going to assume that there's at least you know something going on here but but we don't know the details anyway game update 7.3's june release will remain unchanged and it 
in fact has it's gone out now and patch yep, notes will be released a day before per, as usual and it has all future content updates are also moving forward as planned including 7.3.1 and 7.4 we are looking forward to the future of star wars the old republic and its continued growth and then right. shortly after that he had to do another well, one because one <laughs> well everybody went was, crazy <laughs> everybody went, assumed the worst everyone and everybody bananas. wanted to be the first to say that right the, the poop's gonna hit the fan and right. then keith came back with this yes keith came back whoa whoa everyone <laughs> i love that i love That's the tone the cha- tonal change like the first one was very straightforward very quiet <laughs> very reserved and now <laughs> whoa whoa everyone <laughs> keith continued I was hoping me telling you about the upcoming releases would help you understand this is a new beginning, not the end. We have more stories, modernizations, and MMO content already being planned out beyond 7.4. While details are being discussed and finalized behind the scenes, let's not spin this into incorrect theories. I am asking you to hang tight, and we'll follow up later with more details when we can. Okay, so there's a couple of, you know, there's a couple other things that uh, sort of came out, like... um, Chris Schmidt had an interesting bit on on Twitter. Swatarista right. also did a, a a good kind of breakdown of what he talked about. Um, we also had um, uh, da, 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 uh, Damian Schubert, the former right. senior designer and lead designer and director um, of Swator, who is now with a different company, and he did some more too. Um, he actually th- thinks it could be very good for Swator. Mm-hmm. So let's okay. So first of all, <laughs> we'll talk about let's talk about why people are panicking. Like people are panicking because this is kind of an unusual move. Like this doesn't happen right. a lot. Um, and also historically, what Swotor is doing is not what historically happens. Okay, like there are like essentially um, there are predatory companies out there who essentially buy dying MMOs to sort of take them over and then suck them dry for every dime they can get. That is not what this is. <laughs> this is, is the opposite of what this is. Yes. I know that that is a thing that happens. I've, I have, you know, I, I've read about it. I've, I've seen it and not just, you know, since the broadsword article, but I mean, I've known for years that there are companies that are do this. It's very common, for example, with like um, Asian MMOs because Asian MMOs are very sort of grindy, you know, fun, whatever. And then they sort of like fall off because like they're really, really grindy. And, but then as they get start to die off, they get handed off to these other companies. It's very, very common in that space. This is not that space and this is not that sort of thing. No. So first of all broadsword is not that kind of company they only have a couple of games that they actually run and a a few of those that they're sort of developing on their own apparently Mm -hmm. and the the like they actually do continue to run the the game as best they can like actually doing updates and actually keeping people happy rather than just like you know like keeping it running as long as they can what at the lowest cost and that sort of thing that's not what they do so first of all this is this is not that sort of thing um assuming this happens like again this has not been confirmed yet this could fall through at any time if it's even and i'm sort of assuming that the the talks are in fact happening mostly because keith actually mentions the word broadsword Mm -hmm. um but you know but who knows these things can fall apart for any reason at any time until it gets announced and um, so we we don't know how many people would be coming over from from Bioware, you know, over to Broadsword. But it seems like it's going to be a fair amount of them. It would be inter- it'll definitely be interesting to find out if this happens, who comes over and like how many. And I don't know if we'll ever get a real breakdown of that. But certainly it would be interesting to find out who we can about what we can. Like you know, mm-hmm. like the current writers are the writers coming over the current like like keith is keith coming over jackie is jackie coming over like hopefully they would at least let us know some of those kinds of things like i understand they can't give us a breakdown of every last coder and you know um, bug fixer and and all you know and qa person and everything like that who may or may not come over um but it'd be nice for them hopefully they will at least tell us what they can about that sort of thing we don't know who knows but (laughs) <laughs> and, and let's wait for them to tell us. Yeah, exactly. Let's not get our information from another source. 
let's give them time and right. they will let us know everything we need to know. The last thing that I want to see is a bunch of people flaming on about stuff that they don't know and where it just becomes a, uh, it seems like it becomes a, um, a competition of, to see who can be the most outraged or right. who can predict the worst outcome. outcome all. Right. <laughs> Let's just take our information from uh, Keith for one and the folks at BioWare. Right. And from every th all the information that we've seen so far, it looks like this, if it does go through, could be a very a good thing for the game. Right. It actually could be a good thing for the game. Like, mm -hmm. yes, this is absolutely something to be concerned about and to keep an eye on if you're a fan of SOTOR. Like, definitely keep an eye on this. Make sure that, the, like, when this handoff happens, that it, hand, that they, you know, that it gets handed off well and that they do, in fact, follow through on what they're saying. Like, absolutely, that should be, like, on top of everyone's minds. On the other hand, like, it certainly seems like Bioware and even EA, like, they hardly ever mention SWOTOR at all. Like it doesn't really get yeah, exactly. any love. It doesn't get any real attention. It, you know, it probably gets whatever the minimum amount of money is. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, like it's, uh, you know, and it's, it's great that they're able to do what they can, but it's like, certainly SWOTOR is not their focus right now. If it moves over to say broadsword, if that is where they in fact go, uh, you know, then Swotor goes from being, you know, the the also ran of a pretty big company to, or, which is part of an even bigger company, to right. being like the main focus probably of a company that already does this sort of thing a lot, and like that's actually not potentially a very good place for it to be in. Obviously, we're gonna ha we're gonna have to keep an eye on this. Like, yes, this exactly. Is, this is this is potentially concerning. This is something we need to keep an eye on. Yeah. There is, however, the possibility that like. Everything you know g goes really well. A bunch of the people who know uh, Swotor in and out get to move over there as well and keep moving, keep working on it. Plus, the company that they're under now actually focuses on them and actually you know gives them right. more you know assets or more people or whatever it takes, and that it actually ends up being a big boon for the for the game. Right. That's it what we're all seem, hoping for. It just seems like Bioware doesn't want the game, whereas broadsword does yeah and I, that's I mean, a good way of putting it let them go to where they're wanted and, and they're going to be appreciated mm -hmm. because i mean this is our game and yeah you know, we want what's what best for the uh, uh for the devs too that was one of the things i was worried about i mean i'm just a player of the game i was right. worried about all the people that we've got to know over the years uh the devs and um you know, they become people that we, we know a little mm -hmm. bit. And I was really worried about them losing their jobs. And yeah, if, if it can come out to where, you know, everything works out for everyone, then hallelujah. Right. And broadsword looks like that. If that, if, if that's a place that is going to welcome them in, then more power to them. I'd agree. Can I say that this is something that I never thought would actually happen with SWOTOR? Yeah. Like, no, it never it, it crossed my mind that someone other than Bioware would be developing Swotor. Like to me, it was always like it goes, it keeps going under Bioware, or or at some point EA shuts them down. That's right. That, those in my mind, those are the only two options. This third option <laughs> of the game continues, but it just escapes <laughs> Bioware EA entirely and goes to another company is like kind of mind blowing to me. I think uh, EA is going to be attached still. Yeah, somehow as a publisher, probably just means they can, you know, they get a small amount of residuals, it sounds like, you know what, yeah, what I mean? That's knows. It would be that sort of situation, because, like, I can't imagine, but, you know, another company saying, oh, and still, you know, have some control over us, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I can't imagine that would go well, but, uh -huh. um, but yeah, for You're a right. bunch of reasons, partly because it's <laughs> Bioware, like, I never really thought of Bioware as the kind of thing that would give up. Uh, something and just hand it off to another company at all right. or ea even in general but also lucasarts like if you're doing swotor that means you have to have a very close ties a very close connection with lucasarts lucasarts yeah. you know um musco and others have talked about this 
basically everything has to be run by LucasArts, which yeah. means LucasArts, I'm sure, has to sign off on this. Like, if this happens, LucasArts has got to sign off on this at some point. There's no way that LucasArts can just sit back and watch one of you know something with Star Wars on it, you know, the Star Wars name on it, go from one company to another and not have a say in it. Yeah, there, exactly. There's no way that's that's happening. So LucasArts is involved. I I I can't imagine they're not involved. No, I just hope it's that it's amazing if, to me that this is happening. Yeah, <laughs> it's it, even thought sort, about being happening. If the broadsword thing does happen though, and Bioware's out of the loop, that's another hoop that the devs aren't going to have to jump through. Mm. Do you know what I mean? They're going to be like, oh, mm-hmm. okay, we don't have to ask Bioware. We're just going to be... You know, right. It's just all hearsay. The, just but it would figure be it nice. out on the team and then figure talk to Figure it out on the team. Go talk, to, go talk to, to LucasArts Lucas. yeah. and then... Mm-hmm. Done. And then and then done. Well, yeah, we don't also have to make right. double make double sure One that EA and through. Bioware are both yeah. both a hunky dory with every I, I, every change. Yeah. I'm kind of I don't know, maybe I'm a cup half full kind of person, but I'm kind of excited. I mean, let's see what happens. Yeah. There's really nothing nothing that we could do about it. <laughs> Why not true. just <laughs> kind of go, all right, I'm, I'm in for the ride. Let's I'm in do for it. the ride. This is going to be interesting. Yeah, Evan says, I'm guessing they vetted them already. I mean, them meaning LucasArts. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of goes to, to what I was saying, too. It's like there's there's no way that LucasArts is not involved. There's, there's They've got to have talked There's no way. No. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, yeah, it's wild news, though. I mean, it is wild. never in a million years would I have thought that, that uh, oper- you know, option C would have come out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, to... <laughs> To potentially like, me. yeah, to potentially like, change the game. I was like, "Whoa, what the <laughs> hell's going on?" And I just, I'm, I, I'm glad I was just like, "Okay, let's uh, let's calm down and see what the team actually has to say," because it, you know, just like I said, dumpster fire, but it's like ah, running around, right. with their heads cut off. But yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm, I am optimistic, yeah. very optimistic, and. Uh, I can't wait for the Bioware team to let us know what's going on. Right. Yeah. One thing I would, I think is okay to kind of talk about here. Um, and that's, uh, we'll go back to um, uh, Chris Schmidt. He's not a current employ- employee. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he, but he was with them for a long time. So he kind of just gave, gave his, his opinion, which is fine. Um, I think we'll go ahead and talk about it here, you know, with understanding that he is not a current, you know, insider on in Bioware. Um, anyway, he was talking about how, uh, you know, things have changed for SWTOR over the years. And what he ended up saying is what this meant, uh, and I'm quoting here, what this meant realistically is that you had a boxed product business that had been tried and true for years combined with a live service MMO business that really wasn't understood by the boxed product folks. In other words, what happened was like back in the day, it really didn't matter. You know, they're making an MMO, they were really excited. But as time went on, they didn't make any more MMOs and they went strictly with like, you know, these one and done uh, kind of games. Yeah. Um, and uh, MMOs can be fairly predictable if they run long enough. We knew the SWOTOR business very well. We knew how to turn every dollar invested in the game into several more. SWOTOR was and continues to be a very profitable business with loads of heart behind it. Uh, but an older game isn't sexy. It's not new. It doesn't get marketing orgs excited or social media teams jazzed. It's a legacy game, despite the mountains of income coming in that other franchises are then built off of. And you felt it as a member of the team. It's a fantastic dev team filled with incredible talent. How does mm-hmm. such a close-knit team did you always feel less than? Well, take a look around, look at B, uh, Bioware's social media posts and count the proportion of SWTOR game fan or anything posts compared to ME or DA. Uh, and Swatory said then noted the last post about SWTOR on the official Bioware Twitter was on May 4th over a month ago. So it was, you know, it just happened then because, you know, they mentioned uh, because of May the 4th. Right. Uh, and he also says, uh, remember the Bioware 25th anniversary book, the beautiful 328 page recollection of Bioware's history and celebration of all franchises for a game like Switzer that had been, been already been live for nine of those 25 years at the time of publication. How many pages do you think it had any Switzer imagery or content in or all at, our content at all? 10, 10 pages out of uh, 328. 
So one thirty second <laughs> of the book. Uh, yeah, teams teams notice it, they feel it, and it feels like shit. Does Swotor, does, does Bioware despise Swotor? I don't think so. I think they don't understand it, and it was someone else's game. Does EA despise Swotor? I don't think so. It's a legacy live service, and again, was someone else's game. As a dev on Swotor, you feel like your game is a burden to all of the layers above you, but you persist. You put so much heart and passion into the game, and you thrive on the fan. Tremendous partnership with Lucasfilm. So to bring us back to current news, imagine a team excited about a game with incredible plans that have felt less than by their own studio and company for years being unleashed. Being a part of an org that knows the MMO business and understands those player communities and the incredible stories and connections they form. And he's talking about Broad, uh, Broadsword or a company like mm-hmm. Broadsword. Uh, this feels like an exciting new chapter to turn to me, and I'm optimistic about what this means for that team and the game. Swotor is, to the best of my knowledge, the longest-running Star Wars anything ever. It's a special game, and I'm so happy to see where the team takes it. As far as uh, Bioware, it would have certainly been in their best interest as a business to maximize exposure and support for Sw- Swotor publicly over the years, since the Swotor revenue has allowed for the unusually long dev cycles to continue for the last several games. But now without Swotor, there will be less places to hide heads, R&D, and time. You've got blockbuster single-player experiences hitting high Metacritic scores with two- to three-year dev cycles, and the Bioware pattern has been double, triple that. I'll think it, I think it'll be interesting to see how the EABW relationship continues to evolve in that new world. So yeah, it's basically they're saying you know, kind of what you would have suspected and again, he's not no longer an insider. We don't know how All accurate right. he is, but it's this is his opinion. What he's basically saying is, um, Swotor is uh, valuable. It makes money. It is essentially turned into a cash cow um, that is kind of ignored, <laughs> and it yeah. doesn't feel very good to be ignored on someone something that's making good money for the for your yeah. company. So, anyway. Um, right. And Damien Schubert, who was the, uh, the former senior designer, designer slash lead designer slash director of microtransactions. Um, yeah. Uh, so he, he has m- much of the same sort of, uh, things. So if you're an executive and had a choice between investing in SWOTOR and instead investing in, or in FIFA or Madden, what would you do? Um, he, you know, when you look at it this way, the best place to spend your investment supporting MMOs like makes less sense. But if you're a company like Broadsword, that smaller return looks like an absolute bonanza. Bonanza, because he's saying like MMO, mm-hmm. like you put in a dollar, you get out two to three. But if you if you get a big hit game, you put in a dollar, you get ten or twenty, sort of thing. Um, yeah, so. Uh, when thinking about the decisions company that the companies make, it's always important to look at the big picture and realize that companies uh, of different scale and at different places value things very differently. It doesn't make things less maddening, but they do start to make more sense. So, yeah. Uh, the flip side is that, of course, EA has more money than God, so if you wanted a huge mammoth expansion, EA's deep pockets could make it feasible. Broadsword would have a hard, much harder time doing that, which is true, but it belies the point that EA would likely never do that again. And uh, let's see. So yeah, so um, sort of some of the same things, like going from mm-hmm. a company that re- you know that just just treats your game as as a cash cow versus treating you know you as like the star of the show could be really huge a huge bonus mm-hmm. for Zwotor. So let's you know let's keep our fingers crossed. Uh, let's see what happens. Let's first of all see if the broadsword thing actually gets confirmed or not because it has not been confirmed. And we'll go right. from there. Yeah, and give give the folks at Swotor a break. Give them a little time. Mm-hmm. There's no need right. to attack them and be mean to them. And it's fine to ask questions, but uh, you know, if this is all going through, I'm sure that they're uh, just as know, excited really and scared and, excited and busy. And scared. Exactly, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. All, that stuff. all that stuff. Um, yeah, and we we also wish the best because like it sounds like almost Definitely. no matter what happens, you know, like someone's going to get left behind and then axed by EA Bioware, and we're sorry for you know, anyone who's currently working on Swotor that that happens to. 
because yes, um, sure. it's, it's almost inevitable that that sort of thing is going to happen. We don't know how much of the team uh, is going to move over. We don't even really know how big the team is. Some of the numbers out there are being posted around 70, 80. Uh, that's a really cool number, but I don't know if it's accurate. Yeah, who knows? Um, even if it is accurate, like we don't know how many of those would be, would get to move over, but it's certainly not going to be all of them, and someone's going to get left behind, I'm sure. So I um, you know, so feel bad for anyone that that happens to. Um, yeah. So anything else about uh, the possible move to Broadsword, Kitty? Nothing. N- n- nope. I, that, that's yeah. about it. I just, uh, again, I agree with you, Chilla. Uh, yeah, there are some interesting, you know. The team members. Yep. There's some, there's some interesting articles out there. You know, the IGN article is, is sort of like the, the baseline sort of newsy article that sort of it just came out of nowhere, came too. out of nowhere. And then, but then there's uh <laughs> you know, but so Teresa did a good job of sort of putting, piecing all the little bits that had, had come yeah. out. Sam Zam had some interesting thing to say. There's some other people who are, who are doing some good work on, on this as well. So it's not, you know, we're not the only news source out there for, for that's right. Sotor, but um, we, we enjoy what we do. The uh, Swotor Escape podcast, uh, Max mm-hmm. and Zima had some interesting things to say too. So check out their podcast as well. Right. All right. And let's see. So I guess one other thing is that there was an, uh, sort of moving on to sort of a little palate uh, cleanser before we head out. Uh, Star Wars Outlaws. There was a little, there was a little uh, video of Star Wars Outlaws, which looks like fun actually it's very it seems very story based as well it looks gorgeous yeah very pretty um, have you seen any gameplay i mean I, I don't know what the gameplay is going to look like i don't know if they're using real gameplay or not but i mean i just saw the video as so. no, <laughs> i've seen the some what looks like uh leaked gameplay it looks pretty interesting nice looks really fun i like the little pet well, the little, yeah, i do little too companion. the pet looks so little cute axolotl sort of looking yeah. guy yeah, uh, you know, axolotls are sort of uh, underloved, but they're very yeah. cute. And uh, yeah, so I, I like the idea that there's there's a companion out there. They're sort of axolotl based, seems to be. Yeah, it's uh, it looks really really cool. It, it, Folks yeah, in chat are saying the nice. gameplay is available. Yeah, good. So go check it out. I'll have to check out the the gameplay one as well. Then it, it looks like fun. So it does. Um, yeah. Uh, anything else, Kitty? Nope. That's it, chill. All right, then we're going to do another jetpack code. Thank you for everyone okay. for hanging around this long. And we're going to do another Let's jetpack code for the new uh, it's a, account wide. You know, it's a very cool jetpack. We were very happy with it. Um, okay. Okay. Let me uh, grab it. I'll put it in chat. It is. Is a bee. It, Oh, oh, Lisa. 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 Congratulations, Lisa. Congratulations. Woo-hoo. All right. Let me go ahead and whisper this out to her. Yay. Yeah, there's so... That that game... Congratulations. I don't even know what to say, but that game looks super fun. And congratulations. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it, yeah, it's a, it's a fun jetpack. Um, yeah, it is pretty cool. Not as compact as the HK one. If you, if you want a compact jetpack, the HK one is still the one to get. And I think you can get it now from from like the Seasons vendor. Yeah, uh, the that know, new one actually doesn't look bad on a body type four hmm. character, male character. It looks good. Nice. So congratulations good. again. And... Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we have some more codes, and so we're gonna be doing this for the next couple of weeks probably. And Yay. so ke- yeah, so keep your eyes eyes open, but also uh, you know check with other uh, other people who are in the program. You know, uh, watch their streams or whatever. You know, if if they're uh, you know different things are gonna you know podcasts are gonna do it differently from streams mm-hmm. and su- such. But um, yeah. you know, um, people might have uh, different kinds of contests or whatever maybe they ask you to retweet something and or for a chance or whatever it is but keep your eye out because there's there's going to be a lot of these codes being given out over the next few weeks especially as yep. ev- since everyone basically got them all at the same time i um, will be yeah yeah exactly on saturday yeah. on saturday okay yep. uh, like a couple codes like during the course of the stream yep. or probably something like that you'll have to tune in to see <laughs> 
Okay. Excellent. <laughs> All right, then. That's a show. If you'd like to play with us in the Genie Knights Guild on the Republic side of the Satil Shan server or in our... Ooh, teeny rage <laughs> guild on the empire side to a slash c joint utini to join the utini channel then let us know you're a fan of the show you can email questions and comments about the show to utinicast at gmail.com follow us on twitter using at utinicast or mastodon at utinicast at mastodon.world you can find contact details for us on our website utinicast.com which includes how to subscribe using itunes stitcher and the rest we record the show live bi-weekly on wednesdays 4 p.m pacific by streaming at twitch.tv slash utinicast. Our theme song is Doomsday by Jean-Paul Zogby. And thank you to the chat room. Thank you, chat. Let me look and see if uh, we got someone we can raid. Okay. Boop, 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 boop. Uh... Get to the dashboard thing so I can do that. I always go down and see Utini and think it's you and go, oh, we can raid them. <laughs> Uh, let's see. We got Smokey. Smokey's on. Yeah. Let's All right. Smokey. We'll go say hi to Smokey. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thanks, and everybody. Let's start that raid. Toodles. And then um, here we go. Three, two, one. Boing. All right. I'll say hi to them real quick, and then we'll get over to the other thing. Okay. Damn. Excuse me, I need to crunch. Welcome in, my fellow Star Wars nerds. All right, so we got that. How was the Otini cast? <laughs> I'll go ahead and close that there. All right, stopping the stream, stopping.